Let's suppose we would like to know what the average length of all fish in a huge lake is. Can we take a census? No, because then we would have to catch every fish in the lake. So we take a random sample of fish from this huge lake and get the following results. A sample size of 36, sample mean of 8.25 inches, and we somehow miraculously know that the population standard deviation is equal to 2.25 inches. We do not know what the population mean is equal to, but what do we know? Wherever the population mean is on the number line, then all of the possible sample means we could get from the sampling distribution will cluster around it in a normal distribution. How do we know that? When we have a large sample size that is at least 30, the sampling distribution for the sample mean is most likely going to be normal, regardless of the shape of the population. And our sample size of 36 is large. Since we have a normal sampling distribution, the empirical rule applies. 95% of all the sample means are within two standard errors from the population mean. Do we know the value of the standard error, the length of each of the tick marks? Yes, we do. Let's look at the middle 95% of all possible sample means that we could get. We know that 95% of the time we will get one of these sample means. That's what the sampling distribution for the sample mean tells us. Observe the length of this interval that contains this middle 95%. It's two standard errors above and two standard errors below the population mean. 1.96 if you want to be more exact, but let's just round off to two for now. We're going to use the length of this interval to create our confidence interval. And this is how we're going to use it. When we take a random sample and get a sample mean, we will straddle this interval length around the sample mean. The question is, will this interval that straddled around the sample mean actually contain the population mean in it somewhere? Let's animate this concept to help us visualize how a confidence interval is made. Let's suppose we get any one of the middle 95% of possible sample means. What happens? The confidence interval will contain the population mean in it somewhere. So what proportion of the time will we be lucky and get one of these sample means? 95%. Remember, 95% of all the possible sample means are within two standard errors from the population mean. Let's consider the possibility of being unlucky and getting misleading results. 
we could catch a sample mean more than two standard errors above the population mean. What proportion of the time will this happen? Two and a half percent of the time. See how every one of these results in a bad confidence interval? None of these confidence intervals contain the population mean. That's bad. Aren't you glad that it only happens two and a half percent of the time? I sure am. We could catch a sample mean less than two standard errors below the population mean. What proportion of the time will this happen? Two and a half percent of the time. See how every one of these results in a bad confidence interval? None of these confidence intervals contain the population mean. That's bad. Aren't you glad it only happens two and a half percent of the time? Sure you are. What proportion of the time do we get a sample mean that is unusually big or small? Five percent. Two and a half percent of the time, it's too large. Two and a half percent of the time, it's too small. But 95 percent of the time, this method creates a confidence interval that does contain the population mean. And this is why we state our answer as the following. We are 95% confident that the population mean is between blankety-blank and blankety-blank inches.